Welcome to Phase On Labs, the internet's premier Metroid futurist podcast powered by the World 1 1 Podcast Network. I am, as always, your host, Larry the Bearded Wonder. Joining me this fine evening is my friend, compatriot, and lab rat, Michael Brown. Meow. Yeah. Meow. Yeah. Michael has entered cat mode. Cat mode. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and every week, we bang our rocks together and we use them to come up with new ideas for a Metroid game that sadly we'll probably never get to play, but it doesn't stop us from hoping anyways. So this week, Michael brings us uh, one of his pitches out of his vault of dark, horrible ideas, and uh, we'll see what comes of it. What you got? All right. Weird little idea. I want to expand the part in Metroid 2 Samus Returns where you play as Samus with the little baby Metroid following you. Yeah. I want a game where you play as the baby Metroid at that point. Like something (laughs) happens, you get separated. So a huge chunk of the game is just trying to find Samus again. Like it could just be a little, like like the old Game Boy Advance titles, like short, sweet, to the point. You know, it'd be puzzles, it'd be just entertaining. I don't know, I think, I think I, we could do some fun with it. I think I know what to do with it. I'm listening. So, between Metroid 2 and 3, where she's taking the baby back to Sarah Station, mm-hmm. something happens, gets hit by a rock in space, I don't know, take your pick. But, crash lands on a on a planet and the baby gets separated from Samus on the planet and you play as the baby trying to get back to finding Samus yes and you can build a whole game around it I'm thinking there almost has to be a near near persistent life drain happening and that in order to survive you're finding creatures yeah It'll be adorable. Yep. Yeah, I like this. She's glomming on to little tiny critters at first. Eventually, you see like this massive thing lumbering by with a little hat in the shape of a Metroid. <laughs> so, my question though is, one... What, if anything, do we do exciting with the fact that the baby is not gravity tethered to the ground like Samus is? It floats. It doesn't walk. I feel like that merits doing something interesting. Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet. Mm Mm-hmm. A game which I've never played, but I've always wanted to. Oh, you should. It's good. I've just never had the opportunity. I don't know if you remember, but I uh, got to interview that dude uh, a few years back. Did you? Nice. Yeah, really nice guy. He's got quite a pedigree, too, by the way. I don't know if you know this. No. Um, he's got a like incredible resume in animation. Uh, worked on All Dogs Go to Heaven, uh, American Tale, oh. uh, Iron Giant. Oh. Yeah. Like, th- this dude has won awards, let me tell you. Uh, won a BAFTA, actually, for Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet. Nice. So Why has it never been released on anything other than the Xbox system? I don't know. I honestly don't know what happened. But um, I know he's finally working on his passion project that he's been wanting to do. But that's, that's not really here nor there. Um... But if you want, actually, you know what? I will leave a link to that episode in the show notes, though. So anybody that's interested in that and wants a point of reference to go back to, that'll that'll be in the show notes for you. But yeah, no, I, I'm i thinking, though, that this is one where this is going to end up being more puzzle-centric in terms of, like, block puzzles, moving things out of the way, uh, things like that, because... I don't see a really coherent system for giving the the baby upgrades and 
various True. abilities as you go along. So I think a lot of this is going to be about it being able to essentially pick up, move things, and <laughs> All drain and drain life. And that's really the only couple things it can do. And so you have to get really creative with your world design and building around that in a way that keeps it fresh and interesting for a full game. Yeah. I think that's where the challenge lies. And I don't think it's impossible by any stretch of the imagination. It's just you've really got to find the right team to pull that off. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's, uh, you know, when you said that, my brain was like, okay, all we have to do is separate these two and play as the baby instead. Yes. But I, I do think, though, there's a lot of fun that could be had with that. And you're right. Yeah. I, I think that whole Game Boy aesthetic would have a. Yeah. There is the upgrade right. possibility that you gain a little bit of power to where you can eat certain types of bricks. There you go. Because. Like, eventually you can get the little diamond bricks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's a possibility. This is true. I actually I hadn't thought about that. That's not a bad idea. Um, or maybe it's something where it can only do it for a limited period of time after feeding enough to get that ability. Oh, I like it. Add that way... Clock puzzle into it. Yeah. So you can put a little bit of timing into it as well as not making it so that it only happens at the end. But granted, you kind of gamify it a little bit like, the, like your complaint with the Omega Cannon in Dread. Yeah, but here I don't think it's a bad thing. This, this to me almost has the the feel of like an itch.io type game, kind of like what Milton did when he uh, he made the game where you play as the side hopper as the entire game, which was much shorter than AM2R. But he wanted to explore that a little bit further, and so he made an entire little side game about Milton the side hopper. Okay, that I didn't know, actually. That's awesome. Yeah! <laughs> um, yeah, no, that, that was a nifty fucking thing he did recently. It was uh, it was just a few months back, actually. Huh. So that was, that was really exciting to see that he was still doing some kind of like solo stuff on his own. Yeah. That, that made me solidly happy. But no, I, I do think the the whole Game Boy aesthetic. You oh no, that's too toned down. I was gonna say you could almost get into like the Gato Roboto uh, aesthetic, but I'm like that's that's that would work. But I think I want to go a little bit bigger with it. Agreed. Like I I kind of like the idea of you like uh, as I said, play with the space. Play with, yeah. the, like, the concept of you going into this cavern, and since the cavern is so big, just to show you how small you really are, it pan out, and you're just a pixel. And, you know, like, moving yeah. around, you know, like that, something like that could be interesting. Something that really drives home the scale. Yeah. No, I, I agree. It's a, it's a good way to go. Um, this is one where I would really love to see them do music where it's still got kind of the the creepy thing but it's also a little more beep boop happy yeah I could see that like you're you're not quite at not a care in the world but definitely maybe inching along that line or towards that line could have uh, the, the right feel Almost something along the lines of a uh, uh, journey of the incomplete circle. Yeah, there you go. Uh huh. Like especially the depressing or scary parts. Like that would be perfect. Yeah. That uh, that's one of Zoe's favorites, actually. I understand. Uh, it was damn good. I got stuck at one point and never went back to it, but it was a damn good game. Uh, Zoe's actually doing a forthcoming episode of Mind Over Media on Journey of the Broken Circle as well. Nice. So, for anybody listening, that's something to look forward to in the network feed. Now, 
Here's a question. Do we yeah. do anything fun and interesting as a final boss fight for the little baby to get through to get back to Samus? Hmm. Crocomire. <laughs> yeah. No, not Crocomire, because I love Crocomire. I would want them to live happily ever after. Right. Um, something puzzle-based, like a puzzle-based boss fight where you have Ooh. to try to manipulate things to remove pieces of armor so you can get in there to the succulent flesh. Okay. Because what if the uh, armor is so thick it won't let you drain through it? Right. I'm almost thinking, because you mentioned puzzle-based boss fight, and my, my brain went two different directions at the same time. One, I, I'm sitting here thinking about you know, Portal feels kind of puzzle-based-ish in the in the boss fights, but also so does uh, uh, Insanely Twisted and Shadow Planet has a couple that are more puzzle-centric instead of combat. You know what? Actually, I've got a perfect idea for this. Hit At me. the end of the game, you meet back up with Samus, and Samus has been having her own adventure this whole time. Mm -hmm. You work together for the final fight, such as she'll drop a bomb you have to pick the bomb up and take it somewhere and drop it it'd be adorable <laughs> actually uh you're you're not far from an idea that, that puts me on a thought real close to yours is you don't ever break it from playing the baby but samus comes in and is essentially computer controlled and yeah. acting as just the the weapons fire and you've got a essentially move stuff around to clear the path for Samus to deal the damage. Mm hmm That could be your end run. Yeah. That's a good way to do it. Because that was part of the, your whole function anyway, was clearing out those blocks you couldn't get through. And then the, uh, the final boss, when you get at it, gives you enough juice to actually activate your block eating ability to get out. Yes. So I like this. Also can the Met can the baby Metroid also get a Metroid suit with a murder beam? <laughs> <laughs> like you just following behind Samus. <laughs> It's walking off floppy because all she is is the head inside the suit's head and dome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ooh. It's all. It's almost too repeaty, but what if that last boss fight? kicks off because you know you're you're going into the room where this thing is and Samus is already there fighting and losing and you just you know finish getting through this big corridor with a big Absolutely. meal so you're all super juiced and you're basically replicating the end of Super Metroid where the baby oh comes God, in yes. pumps her full of juice gives her the hyper beam and then that's what you're helping <laughs> yes so much yes <laughs> Nostalgia makes us feel good. <laughs> Shut up. So, what do uh, what do we call it? I don't know. Um, I got. What do you got? <laughs> You're gonna hate me with every fiber of your being. Like I already don't. Metroid, baby, stay out. <laughs> Or something akin to, like, look who's talking now. Oh. Uh -huh. One of those terrible 80s titles about a baby. Child's Play. <laughs> <laughs> Baby's Day Out just has the right feel to me. Yeah. Oh, it's so cheesy and terrible. <laughs> it is. Man, you're, you're talking about Game Boy era shit. I feel like the title should be just as cheesy. Yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> the idea is not bad. I just, man, the, the the title was too good not to. It made me too happy not to. 
<laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's close it out here then. Uh, we'll we'll slip this in an envelope and uh, get it to Sakamoto and say, here, make us a damn game. <laughs> exactly. Indeed. So, past that, I want to say thank you to everybody that tuned in this week. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us. Thank you to my lab partner, Michael. And uh, we'll see you all back here next week on Phase On Labs, powered by the World 1-1 Podcast Network. Press start to engage your mind. See you next mission. Peace! <laughs>